You may not realize it, but one of Canada's oldest living broadcasters resides here in Kamloops. Glenn Robitaille makes his home at Ridgeview Lodge in Brocklehurst. He calls it a great place to live. The 97-year-old has a rich history. He worked in Canadian radio and television for more than half a century. And he even spent a few months here at CFJC-TV. Robitaille worked mostly as a technician, but says he can't be called an engineer because he lacks the formal education. Still, given his accomplishments, he's regarded as a pioneer in Canadian broadcasting. And Tara Gosselow spoke with him. Oh, I just can't break away. I must have you every day. There aren't many people alive today who worked in radio when it was just a fledgling industry. Fewer still who are considered builders of Canadian broadcasting. Oh, heavens, yes. For that reason, 97-year-old Glenn Robitaille is something of a rarity. The day I was born, I was dumped into a tub of good luck. I had good luck all my life. Robitaille's broadcasting career spanned 50 years, beginning when he was 16. He got his first paid job at CKWX in Vancouver in 1934. It came after doing odd jobs for the staff there. They invited me to their transmitter, which was on Seymour Street, right near Davie Street, a little 100-watt transmitter. And the minute I stepped in that transmitter room, I was hooked. From then on, broadcasting was my life. He hosted shows such as Make Believe Ballroom during his time at WX. I'm telling you, being a disc jockey in the 1930s with a program in Menin is a girl magnet. In 1942, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Force where he taught maintenance of airborne radar equipment. Then, in 1949, Robitaille literally stumbled into a major chapter in his life. He was drunk with a couple of Air Force buddies when he went to fix an antenna problem at CFPL in London, Ontario. CFPL owner Walter J. Blackburn was impressed. To make a long story short, Mr. Blackburn apparently phoned around to ask about me, wondering, of course, if he can do that drunk, what's he like sober? He was hired immediately and began a 33-year career. An innovator from the start, CFPL is where Robitaille invented the first legal radio automation system in Canada. We used the system for several weeks, or maybe even months. We had to give up because uh, of several things. It was complicated and people saw their jobs disappearing and didn't like it. For that, he received industry-wide recognition. He went on to win a lot of awards. Uh, he installed uh, a lot of radio stations and uh, that was for RCA at the time. I guess they provided a lot of the transmitter equipment. And uh, he had won awards from the um, Canadian Association of Broadcasters. He was involved with the National Association of Broadcasters in the U.S. Uh, he was awarded uh, two awards, I believe, by uh, Canadian General Electric for his achievements and innovations in broadcasting in Canada. Your Panorama Newsreel, each night at 6.45, the news for and about Western Ontario. Once again ahead of the curve in 1952, Robitaille was responsible for setting up CFPL-TV, Canada's second private TV station. In less than eight months, he ordered and bought the necessary equipment and set it all up for about $400,000. I hand-built me and... The, one of my staff hand built all the audio equipment for the television station, all the console, everything. Yeah. Okay. An innovator who broke new ground in radio and TV, Robitaille counts building the station as one of his proudest accomplishments. He was able to do many things in the industry, and not too many people were both pioneers in both radio and television. And. Uh, Seeing he started in radio early on and then went on to do a lot of things in television, yes, I would say very much a pioneer in both. Robitaille hasn't lost his fascination with electronics. He can't read very well anymore, but still prints off his daily weather forecast on his top-of-the-line computer. I can spend quite a time at London Drugs and uh, Staples 
looking around. Well, another friend was responsible. When asked about his success, Robotai is quick to credit good luck and the people who helped him along the way, former employers and colleagues. I think the most significant thing is that I did all my life what I wanted to do. I was enjoying my work every working day.